wave chip actually um, is, um, is seen here in this little in this little photograph, uh, which is a close up of the four channels. We're looking at a four channel parallel channel um, uh, microfluidic flow system here. And what um, this is capable of is especially um, also um, doing very fast transition times. So it means that we can switch and transition very quickly in a very short amount of time between different solutions. For example, from the running buffer to a sample, a analyte, back from the analyte to the running buffer um, and do that very quickly. And with that, that of course enables you to measure quick rates, weak binders, binders that dissociate very quickly from, from their binding site. We use no integrated microvalves, so that's very important to state here because that's a fact that's making the system very robust also towards more crude samples, unpurified samples, body fluids. We will tackle that in a couple of minutes, the, the robustness part of the system. Here it's just also important to mention that we don't need any microvalves here that have to be close to the to the sensor surface in order to get a very sharp transition, but we're doing it via another strategy, another method. And how is that done? So what's the trick here? Um, uh, on this on this schematical representation here, you see a side cut. Um, we're looking from the side into a flow channel. Um, so the flow channel would be in blue here. You see the sensing area, and you can see that the, the microfluidics shown here are not only connected to the main fluidics of the system via one inlet and one outlet, but rather there's several um, uh, in and outlets more. Um, namely, there is a sample inlet, there is a buffer inlet, and on both peripheral sides here, um, there's outlets um, going to the waste. And what we can do with that actually is, first of all, of course, we would want to inject running buffer that flows directly uh, um, into here, uh, then goes to the left because we have um, the outlet on the left-hand side open and they're on the right-hand side it's closed, so we're flowing running buffer and we're establishing a baseline. At some point, we're doing something, a process we call sample preparation. And that is we're injecting the sample, your analyte, at a certain desired concentration, of course, into the microfluidics here. However, still uh, the, the setup, the situation is that the outlet on the left-hand side is open and we're still closed on the right-hand side. That means that the sample is being prepared in this part of the microfluidics. And you can already see that the sample at its full concentration is here located and prepared very closely to the sensing area. And then uh, going in the next step just to a switch of the openings of the outlet. So we close on the left hand side, we open on the right hand side. We're able to get the sample at full concentration and, um, in a very quick um, uh, time frame, short time frame onto the sensing area and therefore it enables us to measure very quick rates. And of course, as a last step, we're injecting again running buffer here. It flows directly over the sensing area and we're following in real time the dissociation again. So that's all very theoretical and very schematical. Um, so let's have a look at some, some data. What um, can you actually do with that? Um, I guess that's most interesting. So what we're looking at here is DNA, DNA interaction. So it's also some kind of a bit of a benchmarking study we did here, measuring a, a rather weak interaction at different temperatures um, and going up to 25 degrees. We see actually that the rates get rather quick. If we're looking at the whole plot here, for example, we see that in the transition zones here, it looks like um, there's almost no curvature and that uh, it seems almost like, like a bulk shift. However, if we zoom in, um, for example, the dissociation region here, we see that we get all the curvature here in this very short time frame. Um, so it's fractions of a second here where uh, with, with the, again, with a simple one-to-one -one model, we're able to very nicely fit these off rates and look at interactions that are in this case already up to almost 10 per second in off rate, for example, and that's orders of magnitude um, quicker of an off rate than you can measure on any other comparable flow-based label-free system.